It's Tabitha with Nick Harper Manor here. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I have my son Abbott with me here today. Abbott, how old are you? Uh, 12. 12. 12 going on 27, I feel like sometimes. Um, Abbott, are you like big into art? No, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, my kids vary you know they their interest in different mediums and things varies so um abbott is definitely not my artsy kid abbott is a basketball and soccer kind of enthusiast he's more like an athlete but he likes art too so he's a good one um for you moms that don't have super artsy kids and people that um you know art may not be their biggest thing do you feel like art kind of helps you though like yeah sometimes sometimes yeah he likes to sketch, and uh, he likes to do cool, fun techniques with uh, paint and watercolor and stuff in his little mixed-media journal sometimes. So um, Ab and I both have a little bit of anxiety, so I think that art is a good therapy thing for both of us. So it's cool. So welcome. Um, today we wanted to start out by talking about a few things. We've had so many people hop on and join us since we've started, um, since Monday. Um, and we, you know, we did some intros and things before this, so I wanted to really just make sure that people knew our heart and our vision for this when it started to maybe help you understand why we do what we do and kind of some of the, the background behind it. We actually, um, we started this as just a way for people in our community. Um, I teach art here at our studio in Milford in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I wanted my students that weren't going to be able to come into the studio to still be able to interact with me. I wanted the kids in our community to be able to have a way to have art. Our kids in Ohio went home with a lot of, you know, English and math materials, but I, I didn't see art coming. And um, I decided, you know, it was time for a call to action. I was not going to wait for somebody else to make it. I was, I was going to make it. So I hope that this can be something that you use as a supplement in your home during this time and even after. Um, we're going to continue to create content because I see how much of a need there is for it, even from the homeschool families, that this is normal day-to-day -day life for them. Um, we're excited to offer it. So I'm really I'm looking forward to offering it. That also kind of goes into a lot of people have been like, can you just keep it on the project at all time? This is really not 100% just a strict art tutorial. We really want you to understand um, the processes of art. These are techniques. Uh, think about it kind of like, you know, Bob Ross. He was, he was on there painting and he painted really fast. I couldn't keep up with a Bob Ross painting if my life depended on it. If you go into a facility and you try to take an oil painting class, even by the Bob Ross certified instructors, those are three and a half to four hours long and Bob knocked it out in 28 minutes on public access TV. So you've got you've to understand that he was the professional and he was the one that was, you know, giving you some technique and some ideas for these things that you can recreate. Think about our, our demos kind of like that sometimes too. If you feel like you're diving too deep and your kids are are struggling with something yesterday's uh, sloth painting I had a ton of fun with it but I know there were people that that didn't have a ton of fun with it and the reason that you might not have had a ton of fun with it is because you were being a little bit critical of the things that you were doing because you're not a painter this is my life this is what I do and I'm trying to share it with you the expectation is not for you guys to have a sloth that looks like mine the expectation is for you guys to get some paint on your brush and move it around and really connect with a piece and have fun with it if your kids are struggling with it I want you to turn me off okay turn it off come back on a replay and pause and rewind and enjoy it together. Moms, this is for you as much as it is for anybody else. Grandmas, caretakers, aunts and uncles that got thrown into this. My heart is for you. This is why we're doing this thing. I want you guys to have tools to be able to teach these kids some things that you didn't go to school to learn. So that's why I'm here. I want you guys to have fun with this. Um, you know, remember, practice makes perfect, and 
truly there is no perfect we're learning together we're all learning together and we're going to have fun so with that being said um thanks for joining us today thanks for coming in to make some more art with us we hope that you guys are loving these videos we hope you're having fun we've got derek with twisted visions media helping us out with our production on this we've got missy and sean from the happy groundhog studio here in cincinnati ohio and i am tabitha from mcharper manor here as well so abbott and i are going to work on what's really going to i think be whimsical and fun today we're this is like the start of what we're going to do we're going to add a lot more to this this is not a finished product so we are going to be doing just you know some fun things with chalk pastels Chalk pastels aren't something everybody has on hand. They were on the supply list. If you were able to get on the supply list um, and get things in time, we know Amazon's running slow. We have had a lot of people mention that they weren't getting their supplies, that things are delayed. Again, you can always watch us on the replay. You can always substitute. We just want to make art with you today. We want to make art with you every day. So um, today we're using black cardstock here. Um, you can use whatever you have on hand. It doesn't have to be black cardstock. I think the galaxy part of it is cool with black cardstock because this looks more like outer space because it's black. We don't have to add that black to it. I saw a couple people say that they had painted cardstock black. I saw some people say they'd painted a canvas black and they're gonna go that way. That's awesome. I want you guys to be creative and think outside the box. Use what you have. Um, right now, more than ever, we really just need to use what we have. Um, no expectations, no pressure, just art. If you have crayons at home today and crayons won't work on black because it is a translucent medium, a crayon is wax, so you're not gonna see that show up on black, do it on white paper, practice some technique that way. Use acrylic paint, like the stuff that we've used for the past two days, throw that on some black paper. Oil pastels are amazing. It's legitimately the easiest way to get some get some medium on the paper, rub it around. Oil pastels are gonna look a little different. They're like a creamier, chunkier, but you're still gonna have the opacity that you would with chalk pastels, like kind of to a lower level, but you'll get that nice vibrant pop. So use what you have. Um, even if you want to draw, do a rainbow with us. We're just, we're playing with color. Use what you have. So we're gonna get started. What I'm gonna get started with today, we are going to have black cardstock. Abbott and I have black cardstock pieces. Um, that, and you can see mine's a little dusty and it's okay. We just have basic pieces of black cardstock and we have a pile here because we're gonna add some um, planets and details to it later. So we're gonna cut from these. We both have scissors to cut some more planets and things out. We have some chalk pastels. Abbots are open, mine are not. I'm gonna go ahead and open mine. The brand that I have right here is Prang Gallery. I think I had to suggest like 16 different kinds for you guys uh, because Amazon kept running out of stock but we're just gonna use some chalk pastels. We are going to use a little bit of glue to glue these uh, extra planets and stuff that we're making. And then pencils to kind of sketch out our little planets as we go through on the other pieces of paper. And then, you know, I mentioned yesterday, if you've got white paint markers, a white pen, um, chalk markers, anything like that, it is gonna give you a little bit more of a bright, distinct point when we put some of these stars in the galaxy. But other than that, You've got what you need with black cardstock and chalk pastels or any medium if you are trying to create this exact effect. Like I said, use what you've got. And if you really love the effect of this and you're playing with markers today and you're creating with me, that's awesome, we love it. Maybe you just come back and do it when you've got the supplies later. So let's get started. You ready? Mm -hmm. You ready to do this thing? Can All right. Some shout outs. Yeah, let's talk to some people. So Who we got? got? Amy saying hi from Maryland. Hi, Amy. We've got Jamie from uh, Punxsutawney. Oh, Punxsutawney Phil. Yeah. That groundhog, man. We have uh, Tosh from Arizona. Yeah. Hi, Amanda Tosh. Amanda from Amanda. New York. Very cool. Um, let's see. We have the Wilhelm girls are from Winchester, uh, Virginia. Okay. We've got uh, people from California and Michigan. Yay. And the list just goes on. Hi, guys. On. We're so excited you're here with us. We love hearing where you all are tuning in from. So here in Cincinnati today, it's a little bit warmer, but it's still really gray and dreary. Um, not a fan, but we'll take what we got. 
Um, I am getting started pulling out some of these colors that I feel like would be, you know, out in a galaxy. I'm taking some white. Uh, my white's a little dirty, but a white, pink, a couple shades of blue, some turquoise, some plum, some purple. We are going to start, and if you prefer to use a pencil and just kind of, you know, sketch this out before you get started, you can do that too, but, but you don't need to. Give yourself some grace and give yourself some opportunities. Um, we're going to try a couple of different ways. You can do, you know, you can start with one big galaxy swirl in the middle, and that is really going to be like the focal point, and you can have outlying things, or you can have a couple little swirls. You could do this like one over on this side, one over on this side and have things in the middle. But I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to try a different one and see how things work out. There are a couple techniques that we can do with this. We could do one that's more like what we call a spider. So I'm going to do two different ones so you guys can kind of see. A spider one would be more like we start from one point. Okay. So, and we're just going to kind of make little like spider legs, right? So it kind of looks like an open firework maybe just we're just going to make some little spider legs and they're all going in the same direction because these galaxies out in the universe they swirl and swirl so um just kind of that's to get that motion yeah i like that i like that so if you are using um if you are using pencil with the cardstock instead then you'll just go back over and you will zoom zoom across all that use all your little lines right on okay so we've got some white on there um the next fun part is pick a color and we're going to mirror that color and we're going to kind of go in right behind it okay so i'm going to start with light blue maybe we're going to go in right behind it and then i might take one out here something like that and i'm just going to kind of like go around and I'm mirroring again a little bit further away. And guys, there's no pressure on this to have it look like mine because you're gonna see once I start smearing this stuff around, it really doesn't matter what you have on there. There's just some techniques to get started. So yeah, pick whatever colors you like, Ab. Go with, you know. And you can kind of take the colors and go in order of kind of like the next color that you think is closest to it, what would be closest to it on the color wheel or you can go with a different one. I'm kind of going in like sequential order of what I think would be coming through on the color wheel. So like this turquoise out here is kind of, he's kind of fun. Um, yeah, but in regards to the color wheel, we've got our pink in here that we're gonna, you know, make a little pop with, but we're really going from pink to this plum, to this blue, light blue, turquoise like we're staying in our side of the color wheel okay and the color wheel is our our progression from red over through the blues in here where the pink and the blue would mix to make this plum so we're kind of you know when you put these colors next to each other and they kind of smear on top of each other that's the color they'd be making anyway so we're just kind of helping that process so I like to throw some of that Plum in there. He's kind of cool too. And we're just gonna make like what kind of looks like a firework. Mm, maybe I'll use this dark blue. And every one doesn't have to have all the colors. And you see, some of mine don't have all the colors in them. I've never really been inside of a galaxy, so I'm not really sure that the light spectrum really works like that. But we're just gonna play. And then you can fill some more white in if you feel like you've gotten to the point to where you've put a lot of color on there. That white really helps too. And then I kind of circle my middle with white just to give me like a good starting point. Make sure I've got some white, you know, coming out of there. And we're just gonna, you know, put some on there. Oh, I like yours, it's looking good. You ready to smear? Uh, sure, yeah. Yeah? So, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to start smearing these out, right? One little touch, one little swoop, right? And it just kind of looks like a little vortex. If you missed a spot and you're still super thick there, 
you just go right back in. And then you'll see my finger is getting like all these layers of dust on it. Um, wet paper towels are great for that. Covered work surface is great for that too. Um, depending on your chalk pastels, some of them may be a little bit harder to get out than others, but I don't usually have too much problem with them. So that's like a really, you know, compact one. It's, you know, easy to take this dust that's on your finger and kind of like move him out and make everything look really wispy too. So he's more like, he's a really compact galaxy guy right here right now. And then I could throw my outlying stuff right there. Flipping him over. Everybody's loving it. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chalk pastels and oil pastels. Oil pastels are great too. I, I mean, think they really look out working great. They really are. I love it a lot. Do you like the process? Do you yeah. like that? Yeah. yeah. So you can leave it really, you know, really separated, you know, like that. Do you just like, do you like the process of the chalk pastels? Do you feel like it's a fun, easy thing to work with? Yeah. Cool. Um, the other way to do it that um, some people, some younger people may have a little bit harder time drawing like a really distinct swirl. Um, we can draw a spiral. And those are a little bit harder. They take a little bit of practice. That's why I gave you the other more broken option too. But you can just take your spiral and you can have your colors kind of start and stop. And we can go, you know, around the outside of that guy and maybe inside, maybe outside of that guy a little bit too. And we can just kind of have the colors change as we go. Sarah thinks it looks like a truffle tree from the Laura. It does, man. I love those fluffy, fluffy goodness. If you guys are locals that have been in my studio at Christmas time, my Christmas tree is wild and it has a lot of those little fluffy truffula things stuck in it. My Christmas tree is very like susical, very uh, six year old girl for sure. There's some pink in there. Some pink in there. And that's another way you can do it is with the spiral. Just add your colors as a progression and then you can kind of, you know, rub it that way and make it more spirally. The spirals are cool too. I mean, just depends on what look you're going for. What if you think people may be having a little problem with its uh, smudging? So fun tip at the very end, smudging is like the goal of what we're doing right now, right? That's, that's why we're using chalk pastels so that we can smudge it. Um, I think they're having a hard time getting it to smudge. If you are using oil pastels, you're going to have to smudge a lot harder and you can use those oil pastels within themselves. So like my, let's say I had laid purple pastel down and then I want to go over it with the pink. You kind of want to rub in with that and build up some content and then you can move it across. Um, you know, it's the warmer your hand is, the more it's gonna break down those polymers and get it to move a little easier. If your hands are cold like mine, it takes a little bit more work. Um, oil pastels are just a little bit more difficult, especially for this concept. That's why I suggested the oil or the chalk pastels, but oil will work too. It'll just look a little different. You might have to make more strokes and more sketches like back like this guy, your, your strokes may be just a little bit more, you know, furry looking and then you rub them together, so this guy you know blending him and then we have the other the alternative like we did with this one which is more you know more just a loose spiral where I came in and did like the firework and I just did you know things like that and did just a couple colors in there and went with the ones next to it what would be the difference with the uh, chalk pastel versus just a regular chalk? So chalk pastels are super pigmented um, and they're, they're a little bit creamier. They, they slide a little bit. A regular chalk is like very, very, very dry. These are dry, but less so. They're, they move a little easier, they glide a little easier, and they have more pigment. If you think of like the Crayola um, chalk, sidewalk chalks that you use outside or whatever, um, they're really like for big areas um, and just grinding off that, grinding off that pigment onto a really rough surface. This isn't a super rough surface, so we are trying to 
find, you know, we use, we use a chalk pastel that is creamier, that's softer, more easier to break down so it sticks on your paper. And the flip side of that is it does come off a little easier because it comes off on your paper. So I have the mom trick for you here. Um, when we're finished, you can seal these with hairspray. And that's actually what I use in the studio with my kids when we do anything with chalk pastel or charcoal because it does flake so easy. Girl, we ain't going anywhere for a while. We don't need that hairspray. Spray it on, <laughs> spray it on these pieces and uh, it's gonna protect. Yeah, you can get another piece. Um, spray it on these pieces and hold that chalk on there so it's not all over your couch. Um, yeah, I haven't used hairspray in a minute. We're not going to. <laughs> We are for art. If they're not wanting to use their fingers, can they use cotton balls? Oh, yeah. Maybe a Use anything you want. Uh, you're going to find out with me, I'm, I'm about the feelings of art, okay? I like to get in there with my fingers. You'll see me paint with my fingers sometimes. When I do mixed media, a brush is actually, like, the only thing I don't use. I, I like to use my fingers. I like to work with my fingers. When I put on makeup at home, I only use my fingers. I don't use brushes. I just am... You know, really, I like to feel the art. Um, so, yeah, I use my fingers, but you can use a uh, folded up paper towel. You can use, um, yeah, the things Miss said. I think I think cotton balls, cotton swabs, makeup applicators, because again, you nobody using those right now. How you doing, bud? Looking good. Mm -hmm. All right. So basically, you know, you can add some little stars out through your galaxy once you're done with that, and kind of throw some little stars out there maybe do some little things like that Abbott and I are going to start with getting a new sheet of paper and we are going to come back to these I'm going to try to leave these here so you guys can see them but we're going to start making some planets too so I'm getting a new sheet of paper. If you guys have those bulk packs that I suggested on Amazon that have the um, multiple colors in them, some of the some of the packs that had you know blues and pinks and stuff like that, those are these are great to use with the other colors too to make the background for your planet if you wanted to do like mercury or you say you want to do mars start with a sheet of red chalk pastel and then maybe you just have to put in the black and the white um i'll make a mars you want to make a mars i'm gonna make mars okay so any any other paper any paper is fine we just want to add another element to this i want to i want to make it dimensional i want our piece to have this really fuzzy soft look over here of these you know swirly celestial things going on and then I want to have some static things that are piled on top of it that have more of a you know a defined edge. Kirsten says two things number one hi and hi. number two cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style hi and thanks I'm glad you enjoy. A lot of people are still asking about oil pastels, and we do have a lot of other people helping out answering the questions, but again, pushing a little harder and keeping your hands warm will help. It does, yeah. So thank you guys for helping each other. I, I want to just reiterate again, we are such a small group of people. Literally, the people manning this right now is a total, a grand total of, wait for it, five humans. So we, none of us are professionals in this. None of us have any idea really what we're doing, but our heart is here to help you. So we're doing the best we can. When you guys help um, in the community, in the comments, when you guys are reaching out to each other, this is the stuff that's been bringing me to tears. Like you guys loving on each other through this, um, answering questions, helping each other out. That's what makes this able to be done. Um, we definitely, you know, Sean and Missy, Derek, Tommy and I, we can't answer everybody or help with everything. So it's really super helpful for you guys to help each other. I love it and I appreciate you. Um, you looking good? Okay, so Mars, we've got this little red ball right here. So I just laid down a lot of, a lot of the red chalk pastel and I just went in a little circle. If your red ball does not look like mine, that's okay. 
because we have scissors that we're gonna cut this out with. And I am gonna kind of like swirl them out a little bit. You can see my edges here are getting a little, are getting a little blurry and that's okay because I can use the scissors to cut around him, but I kind of like the look of them blurry too. Tara says her boys are really loving the smearing part. Yes, it's the best part. I love it. I think it's so important. So then I'm going to come through. Are you, are you hating, are you hating the touch? I mean, not, really. I mean, like not too much. You like it, but it's all over the place. Yeah. yeah. There was one, one mom that was saying chalk pastels are no go in our house. I feel you. I feel you. And, you know, on the, uh, on the normal side of activities in real life, um, that's where we come in. I mean, we host slime parties here because we know that you don't want that nonsense in your house. And that's why we do what we do because we know, we know, you know, you have nice things. We don't, we don't have nice things here. It's just in our studio. So we get it. It's all right if you don't want to do this one. You're not going to hurt my heart too much. <laughs> Casey says she thinks Bob Ross would be very proud of you. Oh, Casey, you're like making my whole life. Thank you. Bob Ross is my person. I, I, I love him. Him and Fred Rogers are my two favorite. I, you know, as an illustrator, I make shirts that are inspirational. And that's, you know, what we, what we used to do. We would sell them um, at art shows all around Cincinnati and, my, one of my more recent ones was uh, Loving on Your Neighbors, um, Mr. Rogers shirt. They're just my favorite humans. They're pretty special. So I'm taking this gray and I'm gonna go in and just kind of do some stripes through here. I did that a little bit with the white. I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna add some like gray and we can, you know, kind of throw those through there. Um, you know, even though we're on a black background, I wanna add some black texture in there too, right? We can, I mean, it can only improve it. So, and just layer it on. If you don't like the way it looks, turns out chalk pastels layer really easily and you can layer right over it. Um, let's see what else. So here's what we're gonna do with this guy. I'm just gonna cut him out. And if I was saving paper, if I was a good steward of my materials, I would definitely have done this closer to the edge and I would be, using this paper to its its max and starting at the edge and then cutting my things out. But, you know, after the fact. So I'm just gonna cut him out a little bit. I'm gonna sit him to the side because I kind of love him. So I'll leave him over there for now. Um, next, I'm gonna do, oh, you're doing the earth? Go you, he's awesome. Maybe I'll do earth too. You guys wanna do earth? What's, does, ever, does anybody have a favorite planet? Anybody have a favorite planet? I, for one, say that Pluto is still a planet. I'm a huge <laughs> champion of Pluto. Um, I agree. What do you say? I, I agree. You agree? Yeah. Pluto? Pluto's still a planet? Little, just because he's tiny, 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 tiny people and tiny planets <laughs> can do big things, right? Let's, take, let's, uh, let's love on Pluto today. I'm going to put Pluto in my galaxy. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, an earth too, because Abbott, Abbott did that one for me and inspired me. Well, you're going to love this. Nicole says her sensory kid loves these projects because there is so many options on how to get messy or not. Yes. So my son Asher that you guys will meet tomorrow has sensory processing disorder and he has some, you know, hard times with things that are, things that are messy or not exactly what a typical kid would like to do. So we've learned a lot by having a special, a special boy in our lives. And, you know, sometimes gloves help. Sometimes with him, just, you know, a, a tight hug to tell him that we're, you know, we're gonna wash hands in just a minute. Sometimes he's like not having it and we just <laughs> abandon ship. So you do what works for you. So my earth is not gonna look like the real earth, but that's okay because art is subjective, guys. You just kinda, you do what works for you. My earth and Abbott's earth look different and I love them all the same. And you know, you can throw some other colors in there with it too. We've got some uh, fourth grade 
fourth grader is letting us know that Pluto is it actually a dwarf planet. Okay, so he's sense. so he's still a planet. <laughs> I mean, he's still allowed to be a planet. I'm okay with that. I'm all right. That's good. A lot of people love Saturn because of the rings. I know. Yeah. If we have time, maybe we'll throw. I one. mean, planets with jewelry, of course, are <laughs> the best. <laughs> planets that are blinged out. All right. So I'm gonna cut him out too. And cutting your paper down before you cut is a great way to not be like trying to do that. I'm going to tap the, I'm going to tap some of the chalk off the side of this so that I'm not creating a huge smudgy mess while we go. Are you guys having fun making the planets? They're so swirly. I just want you guys to keep just layering the colors on and doing the things that you do with these chalk pastels. There's no right or wrong way to do these. So just make sure that you guys are having fun with it. Anybody new to chalk pastels and enjoying this process for the first time? Put some scraps up here. Maybe I will cut one right here. Let's see. What are you working on? Oh, you finished your earth. I love them. All right. What's next? What color is Saturn? Is it like orangey yellow? It's, red, it's reddish. More like I think. in the yellow. Let's go in the I thought it was blue. blue one. More bluish. Can, can anybody help us out on that? What color is Saturn? I think it's red. I think. Saturn? Yeah, I feel like a reddish. A reddish orangish. Yeah? yeah, it's red. So, so let's, a darker, yellow, maybe a darker red. Yeah, hmm. let's let's go in the orange vein of things and and see. It gives us a nice contrast to the other colors too. So it's we'll go with that. Big. Yeah, Saturn is big, isn't he? Uh, that's another thing to note. You know what? I'll start on the bigger one so that I can have him come off the side of the page because Earth is pretty big over there. So. Christina says that they've never used the chalk pastels before and they really are loving it. Yeah. I want you guys to experience so many new mediums and things that you can play with. These chalk pastels will literally never get old. They, a lot of people don't have them, but I think they are the underdog of art supplies. A lot of people have oil pastels, and I will honestly tell you, they may be a little bit messier than oil pastels, um, but I feel like their mileage is high compared to oil pastels. I. I just love the fact that you can do a lot with them. You can use that black pastel in place of uh, charcoal to learn things like when we go into still life, you can use that for your shadowing. Just your mileage is high with, with a chalk pastel. When you do any sort of drawing, you can use these in just for light shadowing. Um, you can get chalk pastels. The Derwent um, ink tense blocks are similar to oil Past, or I'm sorry, they're similar to chalk pastels, but they're water soluble too. So you can water them down and use them like a chalk pastel and then add some water and kind of swirl those around. And we can, uh, we can get you a link to those too if anybody needed more info on those. But those are the ones that I've been playing with recently in mixed media stuff that I do. So um, Saturn, let's give him, did we get a definitive answer on Saturn? We've got some feedback yellow. that Saturn is yellow, red, and orange. And with purple rings. Oh, yes. That is 100% what we're I want. I'm feeling a lot of yellow orange. Yes. For Saturn. Okay. So Maybe the shades are purples and blues. Yes. Okay. We I like a, this, guys. We even have a fun fact from Bean, who's a first grader, that says Saturn's rings are made from a destroyed moon. <gasps> That's so, like, <laughs> mystical. Yeah. And I, I, I just love That's, it. That's yeah. some ultimate recycling right there. Beans, thank you for that. <laughs> That's awesome. We love science, too. We love science. I know I've mentioned it before, but I'll keep saying things like this because it's true. I only watch documentaries. I only watch animal documentaries. So, um, I mean, that's not, that's not really the only TV I watch. I, I like some other things sporadically, but I would say 95% of the programming that I watch is, you know, a documentary, <laughs> either art process or uh you know art inspired or animal <laughs> animal stuff and david attenborough if it's narrated by david attenborough oh, yeah. i will watch it that's always and I will number love one it. choice 
<laughs> All right, so now we have this ball for Saturn. If you guys want to add some rings to him, um, we're going to use a little bit of perspective in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna act like the ring is coming out from behind him, okay? So we're gonna... Like that. Yes, Abbott, you nailed it, buddy. It looks so rad, great job. The cool thing, so I did the ball, and I'm going to show you how to layer over it. Abbott just went ahead and did his perspective work on it. Pull his over so they can yeah. see Yeah. Couldn't tell if Dad could show, but here we go. Here. So his, you know, he did the perspective work on it before he got started in that, um, which is, you know, a little bit more of an advanced technique, but I'm going to show you, too, how you can just layer right over that. We're going to go, we're going to take our ring out from behind him, and we're going to swoop around and then take him back, Okay. And again, you're just gonna start from behind him, swoop around, bring it back. You're gonna be putting like, you know, my potatoes. You're gonna be putting like a flat, a flat potato in there. A log, an eclair, some sort of big oblong ring, okay? Um, and you know, maybe, maybe his rings have like, you know, some other cool things happening in them pinks and but Saturn's super cool. I can't wait to see today's drawings from everybody. We're yes. amazing. We've got some rainbow planets coming oh up. Oh my god. People are making their own planets, making them up Make completely. Make up your own planet. It's a galaxy we haven't discovered yet. It's completely acceptable and encouraged. Um, you know, and white is is really cool to just add dimension to things, you know. Throw some white in there. In between. Just kind of. We put the know. hashtag up if you want to mention it. Yeah. So make sure you're sharing your illustrations with us, your projects with us at Made with Mick Harper. It's hashtag Made with Mick Harper. That's how you're going to share with us. Um, we're actually going to be doing a couple giveaways tomorrow. Um, Bless you. You okay? Did you suck in too much of that? <laughs> Did you dust Chucky off? Busty. Oh my goodness. Some of it dusts off. We're going to be doing some giveaways. Uh, and I'll talk about that here at the end in a little bit. But that's how we're going to pick your giveaways. That's how we're going to find you is the hashtag. We can search it on Instagram or on Facebook. And again, tapping off this extra. But we can find your artwork with that hashtag made with McHarper. That's how we're going to choose our recipients of the giveaways. And they're good. They're good. We'll talk about it here in a minute, too. Bless your heart. Are you okay? Oh, we're Goodness. getting some feedback, too, that the uh, Saturn rings might actually be made of ice. So Ooh, there's a little debate here going. Not that's sure. Cool. You guys, and then we, have, got we have all saying, day to Google it. Ice I'm so and excited. rocks. <laughs> yeah, maybe ice and rocks. So maybe, we're both, maybe everybody's right. We'll go with that. Guys. Guys, you're, you're blowing my mind. All right. Saturn's my last guy. I'm going to cut him out. And if you didn't like some of your, like, squiggles, if you didn't, you know, if you went out of the lines or whatever, that's a lot of why some of these times I love to cut my stuff out after and apply it because it's like an instant fix. It's like, whoops. And I'm cutting the, cutting the happy accident off, you know. And if you see, I put my thumbprint on there because I layered that chalk so high on this guy. My thumbprint kind of like took some of that off. Just buff it out, right? And it kind of adds some dimension. Oh, you're going to love this is talk about moms using stuff around the house. A pro tip. Some people's using old eyeshadow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. That's Thanks, great. Thanks, Lauren. Yes, Lauren. That's great pigment. Um, we're not using it, right? I mean, <laughs> use it up. We're not using it. Who's going anywhere? Not this, not this crew. So once I get all these cut out, I'm just going to start deciding where I like them. I truthfully kind of like mine hanging off the edge, not really using the borders. So I might, I might do some fun stuff with that too. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly where I love this guy. Maybe right here and here. It's kind of fun. You decide where you like yours. Yeah. So we're going to choose where we're going to put those. You all done with your paper? 
salt trash pile over here. Um, glue sticks will work if you don't have a lot of the chalk debris underneath it. Sometimes that the glue stick will kind of want to grab the, the debris from the chalk that you're putting it on versus the paper gripping the paper. So if you are putting it on an area that doesn't have any chalk, it's fine to use a glue stick. That's okay too. Just remember when you're rubbing that glue stick on the backside and you're putting it down against something else, you are going to rub some of that chalk away. So just, you know, have a little grace with yourself. I'm going to use regular old glue, you know, just a regular like school glue, Eileen's tacky glue, just because that stuff really bonds anything. Which one are you going with? Oh, are you doing more? Yeah. Look at you go. Abbott's liking the chalk pastels. So I'm going to take my little tiny planet and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here and I'm just going to kind of like rub it around. Make sure that I've got a good smoothed out amount. Glue dots are great for this stuff too. And then that adds them on. Take my next one. And since he's kind of hanging off a little bit, I'm only gonna put glue on this back side here. Or I'm sorry, this bottom part. Just to give him, you know, enough to make contact here. And then I'm gonna George put... wants to know that he thinks that you guys are doing such a good job. Oh, thank you, George. Yesterday was a hard day. We we tried to add some new equipment and things were rough and it threw me off my game a little bit trying to do that. And you know, we did tackle some more in-depth processes and paint alongs are always hard because people hold themselves to like a higher standard. So yesterday was a was a weird day for us, I feel like, over here. So thanks for saying that that you know, it was it was different than the first couple days, trying to do something on a, you know, more technical scale. But I think it's important. I think it's important to dive deep and do some of these bigger processes because some kids need that. Um, some kids need to be stretched and challenged. And I truly believe that every single kid can benefit from what I did yesterday. I think that even if that's not your comfort zone, you give it a try and you're gonna make art your own way because what I am putting out there, like these swoops and these things like that, it could be similar to like a Van Gogh style swoop, but it's not gonna look like Monet. He was very soft and things like that. We need all different styles of artists. The way that I show you to do something could look completely different on your end. And that's amazing because that's what art is. And we all, need, we all need our own style and our own, you know, our own artwork. So I love that people are, are doing it and I love that people are enjoying it. Got my earth plaster down on there. Feeling good? I even want to make a UFO to fly through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was say somebody said if you could if you if you have a chance, maybe you could make a shooting star to show. Oh yeah. So a shooting star we could just add in the background. We can just do like a little, you know. Maybe like just give him like a really nice little burst of light right here. Just kind of push. He's going to be wispy like our galaxy. He's going to be, you know, a little burst of light. And then maybe drag some pieces through there. And he's whimsical. He doesn't look like a real shooting star, you know. But maybe go like that. All right, people are still cutting out. Meg wants to know what the benefit is cutting them out versus just drawing them on. Um, because when I draw them, mine get really fuzzy around the sides after I blend. And I just wanted you to have that nice crisp um, planet on top of kind of a blended, more organic background, a wispy, whimsical feel. You've got these nice, um, solid, very static pieces on top, which, you know, just compositionally, my preference. You can do it all on one. You can build it all on one. I kind of like to, you it's know. It's a little three dimension. It does, yeah. it gives you that, it does give you that third dimension. Um, we've got 15 minutes, so I'm going to, I'm going to draw you guys a rocket ship real quick. That's, oh yeah, that's you're fun. getting requests for spaceships. Oh my sure. gosh. <laughs> so we're going to draw a rocket ship. Yeah, I'm going to do it on this one. So I'm going to sketch it out with, uh, graphite real quick. And this one might be one that you guys have to watch on the replay because I am going to go through it pretty quick so that we can get out of here. The reason we're trying to do this in an hour is because a lot of you guys have dedicated an hour to your art process. And I don't really want it to necessarily take up your whole day. 
So, so I'm going to make my little rocket ship over here two wide lines with kind of like a kind of a, a chubby rounded triangle top to him it's gonna be hard to see my graphite on this black but I think it'll work I can't I'm gonna kind of round out the bottom and I'm gonna give him little like legs coming out all right give him some little some little legs coming out All right, and then what color? Let's go gray. Let's go with a basic rocket ship. I'm gonna give him a little porthole too. Little porthole. So these legs are kind of like the ends of bananas, right? They just kind of arc over, round the tip and go back up, kind of arc back in. You're gonna kind of mirror the shape of that. You could do straight, you could do like, you know, a rocket ship with straight triangles off the side. I mean, you guys, there's really like no right or wrong way to do this. You could look it up and do a, uh, you could look it up and do a still life view drawing from a rocket ship toy that you have or look up one on Google images, something like that. Have fun with that. So my gray rocket ship, we're gonna give him like a, let's give him a neon green top because we can. Are you doing a rocket too? Yeah. yeah. Can we do a birthday shout out? Oh, whose birthday? This is a personal one for Beatrice. <gasps> Beatrice, Missy's daughter. It is her sixth birthday today. I know Sean is at home with her, helping her um, work drawing. through these projects. They're drawing at home. Beatrice. My sweet girl, we love you. Happy birthday. I hope your birthday is great. I saw you blow out your donut candle cake this morning. Happiest birthday to you, babe. Anybody else have a birthday today? We'll try to get to the, all the ones that are mentioned, but you know. Um, it, is, it is so fun to get to be able to do some of these things with you, like yesterday's tutorial on Lily's birthday and you know our friends from Oklahoma that their birthday sloth painting was canceled like it's such a joy I'm so blessed to be able to do this with you guys all right I'm gonna cut my little rocket out Fun over there? Yeah. Shake some of this dust off. Heather wants you to know that you're doing a great job. They've been watching and they love all the different Aww. skill levels that you've been incorporating. Thanks, Heather. We really appreciate hearing that. We're just trying to put things out here that can, you know, amp it up for some kids and you can water it down for other kids and go at your own pace, learn. What I like to say, take what you like, leave what you don't. We have a birthday, a 16th birthday for Maya. Oh, happy 16th birthday, Maya. I hope that you are celebrating in a really cool way today. It's Evelyn's birthday. Happy birthday, Bridget, Evelyn. And Ivory. Bridget, Ivory. Thanks for spending your birthday afternoon with me. Also Carson's 12th birthday. Happy birthday, Carson. All right, so I'm gonna put my little rocket ship flying across the screen here because I'm gonna do some like fire out behind him. I'm gonna glue him on kind of where I want. And the reason I tell you to smooth that glue out, I know I'm doing it with my hands and that might make some moms squirm, some kids, some people. <laughs> but um, you just kind of want to get it a little bit as smooth as you can so it doesn't cause big wrinkles in what you're doing. So we're gonna squish him down, leave him on there. And see, when I do that, 
you see that like it's taken, you know, it's adding a little bit of like texture. It's taking away some of the chalk that I've laid down and that's okay. Chalk, chalk pastels are whimsical. I guess that's probably really why I like them. I really like whimsical stuff. And I'm wiping on my jeans. Don't pay attention to me with that, kids. That's, I have art jeans on. <laughs> and I'm going to put some, some fire out behind him. I'm just going to do some little flames, you know, just some, some red and some yellows coming out behind him. orange like he's flying through the sky we're just making you know nice little s shapes big loose s you can do curls too you could also have it like let's use a different color to show some contrast you could have like some big swirls here those are fun and if you're noticing, I layer the chalk on top of each other to kind of blend it too. That's a nice, another nice technique, but. Well, Tabby, you'll love this for mixed media. Somebody cut out a person out of a magazine to add to the rocket. Yes! I am obsessed with mixed media. Anybody that knows me <laughs> knows that that's like, you know, my thing that I do for my personal joy. Uh, that's the one thing I don't, that's the one thing I don't sell. Um, in the art world, mixed media is just like my joy. So I love that so much. It makes me happy. You can always go around these things that we've added and kind of add a little bit of like white to give some dimension around them. You can, you know, put some shadows if you want, just some little things. I'm gonna kind of try to bring my rocket out of the middle of this galaxy, add some white. White always gives everything a nice little pop. Erica says they're using white out for the stars. Heck yeah, yeah. So I love, um, yeah, which would you like? You want a paint marker? Abbott's gonna use a real paint marker. Um, I'm gonna use a chalk marker. If anybody has a chalkboard at home and has a chalk marker, these are my favorite. Um, you know, they're, you know, you pump them like you would a paint marker, but they wipe off of non-porous surfaces, but things like things like uh, paper and porous surfaces, they, they kind of just stay on forever. So I love chalk markers because of their opacity. That just means you can't see through them. So, and this one's looking kind of light. So I might go over to this paint marker. I don't love the way that guy looked. I'm just gonna prime this paint marker and see. How's yours doing? Oh, yours looks good. Mine's just brand new, so he's not. Oh, there we go. So paint marker, you can get you these tiny little Deep, deep, deep. And it's nice to have a variety. Some that are bright, some that are, you know, more, what's the word I'm looking for? Distant. Distant, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know, not here. Yeah. Not here with me. <laughs> <clears throat> not so up in your face. Where's Grover when you need him? Layer, layering it on their uh, sequins and glitter for stars. Heck, yes. There's always room. Yes, for please. <laughs> I love it. Somebody wasn't sure what mixed media is, which is basically what this is. So if you want to. Yeah. Well, so mixed media. Using. Yeah. Anytime you're layering, you know, or using multiple processes in one piece, it's not just painting. It's not just drawing. It's not, you know, we're, we're bringing things together. Uh, my mixed media pieces usually are like on canvas and I'll have added, you know, pattern paper, findings, use stencils, texture, um, texture, liquids and creams so yeah so we i feel like this guy i'm ready to call it quits how are you feeling bud oh probably just his last thing on yeah him. oh my gosh look at your alien can i bring him over oh my gosh abbott's little martian in the middle <laughs> he's so fun let me see i bring him on over abbott has this guy this little martian he is He's so cute. And then here's a full on so you can see it nice and yeah. He looks great. You did a good job, buddy. Thank you. All right. Mom trick. 
we're gonna hairspray this guy. And, and you're gonna see it is gonna bend up. And I'm gonna move my chalk pastels out of the way because if you seal your chalk pastel, it's not gonna work so well next time. You're gonna have to grind it out a little bit. So we're gonna put our chalk pastels back up in our tray, out of our space. If you are using this hairspray on a kitchen table or something, make sure you're covering your, your area so that you're not sealing hairspray into your kitchen table. Um, you know, just think about whatever you're putting on there, you're kind of sealing into it. It is hairspray, so it'll eventually come off. You're just gonna have to scrub a little bit. So you wanna go a little, a little far away, kind of a, um, you know, more of a, maybe a foot away. And just kind of little bursts, go across and seal that in. It's going to make it dark for a minute. It's going to look like everything you just did that's beautiful went away. Um, it'll, when it dries, the color will be more vibrant. But that keeps it from moving around on your, on your paper. So you got it, buddy. Michelle says they have glitter hairspray. Yes. <laughs> yes. All the yes. If it's glitter in some contained form, like glitter glue or glitter hairspray, that is what I'm talking about. Now, that might be a little too close, babe. So pull your hand back. Yep. Yep. When you get real close up on it, you're going to have, it might melt your stuff away. But that's okay because you can go right back over it with chalk pastel. Yep. And then once it starts to dry, you're going to see it kind of come back to life. But yeah, about a foot away. Nice, even sprays. Um, it's still able to be moved a little bit, but... It definitely keeps it more safe. So we are finished with today's. We are going to put him off to the side and we're going to talk about tomorrow. So tomorrow's project is going to be just a little sculpture. Um, I'm going to have some things that I sculpt with you, um, but we're just going to sculpt with Model Magic tomorrow. If your model magic didn't come in or you don't have it or you're just joining us, I bet you've got Play-Doh or I bet you can make some. Um, Play-Doh is going to be the same concept. It's just going to have cracks in it when it dry air dries hard. You might just sculpt and play with us, but Play-Doh will work fine for tomorrow. Any clay, anything you have will work. I suggested model magic because it's lightweight. Um, it'll take up, you know, it'll hold up to a kid dropping it usually. So I kind of like to use model magic for projects that are just, you know, fun things that kids are going to handle. So we're just going to make some things, um, you know, baby narwhals I made with some preschoolers here in Cincinnati, the village preschool, shout out to my favorite people there. They came in and brought their um, enrichment kids and we made narwhals together. And we had a little, you know, frog that we've made, just some ones from little classes and camps that we've done. I do like to use things in Model Magic like uh, pipe cleaners. So if you have pipe cleaners at home or anything else like a straw, you can use one of those um, paper straws or even a plastic straw for like a narwhal's horn or a unicorn or whatever you like. Um, we, we can add things to this clay that'll stick in like the little hedgehog. Uh, porcupine peg doll. I mean, you guys were getting creative for your add-ons. So these are going to be the same concept. You add whatever you like. Um, but yeah, the, the model magic is, and these are one of the kits that I suggested to you guys just because it had a nice variety of colors. I like to start with um, white and add some colors and that's just going to keep it, you know, a little bit more affordable for you so you don't have to have tons of the colored ones. So I like to buy the white, add a little bit of color in. That gives you a variation in shade and value too. So yeah, we're going to sculpt with those tomorrow. What you will need for tomorrow is the Model Magic and any extra add-ons that you want to add in. Something to cover the surface of your work area so that it's not picking up debris and it's not leaving debris on your table as well. Um, I like to use even like a little Play-Doh rolling pin sometimes. Um, the side of some sort of cylindrical thing that's a little bit more firm than a paper towel holder or a paper, paper towel roll. Yeah, I mean, you could even use your hairspray. We just, you know, a nice rolling pin is a, is a really cool, useful tool. Um, you know, so bring all of that and you're happy open hearts and we are going to make some really fun things. 
I wanted to talk about a giveaway. We are going to be going through the Made with McCarper hashtags over tonight and tomorrow and the ones you guys have submitted over this week. Each week we are going to do a giveaway. So Missy and I have decided that this week we will be giving away a Manny, the Manor Tea. He's our mascot. He's our friend. Um, Missy has generously donated one of these that we're going to give away to. All of her stuffed animals from the Happy Groundhog Studio have um, been made with upcycled materials, eco-friendly felts. They're so sweet, and one of you are going to get a Manny. We will choose from the pictures that are um, with the hashtag made with McHarper because we can't go through every comment and see every picture that way, but we can scroll through Instagram and Facebook at the hashtag and see what you guys have posted. So we will decide one of those um, between this week's pictures and you can hop on board if you haven't participated yet. You still have just as good of a chance as anybody else. The more pictures you share, the better your chances are. So we're going to give away a Manny. We're also going to give away one of my favorite shirts that we make, the kindness one. And I don't know if you guys are going to see this backwards or not. I still haven't figured all this, all this Facebook stuff out, but this one says kindness is my jam because that's my it's it's mine kindness is my jam so this is a kid's shirt and an adult shirt that we make um when you win the winner you get to pick whatever size you want if you want a if you want a kid's size if you want an adult size we go on this one tom do we go 2t we start at 2t all the way up it's 2t yeah. 2t to 3x in adults on this one so this one is one of my favorites because when we screen print this one we lay eight colors down and then we just run it in ombre i know we've been talking about ombres and the ways that things are you know the colors are shifting into the next um one on you know shades or the next color on the color wheel this one we put eight different colors down and we run it across when we screen print and they are so fun to make this is the one screen printing one that i will actually take i taught tom how to screen print so he could do all of our shirts for us this is the one that i'm like oh i want to play i want to make this one let me let me help with this run so we're going to give away one of those because the world could use a little kindness a lot of kindness, right? I mean, I think the world could use a lot of kindness these days. We're all struggling. We're all having a hard time. I hope you guys are taking care of each other and yourselves out there. Um, the ways to help, so many people have asked how they can help. You guys can continue to donate on um, PayPal. It's paypal.me slash McHarper Manor or Venmo. Venmo is great for us because they take less fees. It's our favorite. It's Our Venmo is at Tabitha, T-A-B-I-T-H-A dash mcclung m c c l u n g and that comes straight to us and helps um, support all these people that are helping us do this helps us we're working with um somebody right now to get a i don't know if you guys have those little libraries where you live where people can pick up a book drop off a book that they're not using like the little pantries we're going to make a little art library here in milford i have a friend who's generously donated um, her time to help us build one of those so your donations would help supplies um, to build it supplies to stock it we want to make art accessible for everybody in our community and yours i mean we will we will think big scale globally on stuff right now we just want to make a little art a little art shed that people can come pick up some stuff from if they're having a hard time getting these resources locally. So can any people, donations help with that too. Can people purchase that shirt on your website? People oh yeah, them. yeah. People, yeah, you can get the shirt on our website. Oh, our man, website is mcharpermanor.com. You can click on the apparel link um, and you can go through. We have it sorted by ladies, men's, kids. You guys can always grab your apparel from us that way. Our lead times and shipping out are taking a little, you know, a little bit longer because we're trying to put this content out for you, but you will get your item. If you need it for a birthday or something soon, just be sure to give me a note with your order saying like, I need this by this time and we will do our best to get it to you by then. But yeah, that's today. We look forward to seeing you guys for Model Magic tomorrow. We really appreciate you all hanging with us and doing these fun things. Anybody else have any pressing questions? Anything else we need to cover? I think nope. everybody's just thrilled. Everybody yeah. loves you. I think Thank the class you guys. is amazing. Yeah, I love hanging with you guys. It's been awesome. So thanks again, and we will see you tomorrow at 1. If you can't catch us then, get us on the replay. Have a great day, guys.